All right, friends, so two weeks ago, my next guest, OJ, received a Facebook message that turned her life upside down. In that message was the phone number for a man named Danielle, the man who could be OJ's long-lost father. After two days, OJ found the courage to call him, but when she did, his take on this painful situation shocked her. Watch this. I'll admit, I, I was a wild boy since I was 12 years old. I was in the streets. In 2017, I got shot in the head, and it's really hard for me to remember things. I barely remember having sex with OJ's mother, and it, and it was a one-time thing in the hallway. My mother always told me to wear a condom, and this time, it wasn't nothing different. Hey, listen, I have seven kids, and I made sure I've been there for all of them. I don't even know if OJ really mind. And her mother stopped talking to me when she got pregnant, and I never heard from her again after that. I really do feel bad for OJ. She's asking me to help her financially, and I don't got it. Karamo, I need to get this DNA situation in order, please. OJ, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. So, it is my understanding that you have never actually met Danielle before. Never. When was your first phone call that you met was how long ago? It was only about a week ago. What was that first call like that you had with Danielle? It was very nerve-wracking, honestly, because I felt like, oh my goodness, I never thought that I would even have a chance to do this. And the very fact that I, I'm now it's happening, it was just like, whew, yes. So when you finally talked to him on that phone, how did all of his denials make you feel? Um, honestly, I just felt like an outcast, kind of, or a black sheep, like when I was talking to him on the phone. And he got smart, got an attitude with me. He was like, why are you being nosy? What did he say outside of being nosy and all that? What was he saying to you? Well, I was actually just trying to hear him on the phone. He had just gotten on the phone. And I just was trying to hear him and I was hearing all this background noise and I couldn't hear him. And then he said I was being nosy and then hung up on me. Wow. So that first conversation already started on a path of like, we can't even communicate. Yes. Wow. So how long have you been searching exactly for your father? Um, so I have not really been searching for him because I actually was under the impression that another man was my father. So this wasn't like some long search where you've been searching for years and years for Danielle. This no. recently just came up. What's your relationship like with your mother? Um, so my relationship with my mom is pretty much non-existent. So who raised you growing up? Um, so my great, great uncle um, and his wife, they actually took up, you know, the slack of everything and really um, took guardianship over me yeah. and made sure that I was good. You know, OJ has been searching for her biological father for 23 years, and you are about to meet the man who could potentially be your dad. You know what I mean? So everyone, let's go ahead and please welcome Danielle to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you for being here. So, take me back. What happened when OJ contacted you and called you? All right, well, first off, when, when, when she contacted me, like, she didn't contact me. I contacted her. Mm -hmm. So, through her uncle, who told me, who I seen in the store, and he told me that his niece it might be potentially mine, mm -hmm. because they already had some other guy, and it wasn't his, and so I reached out and got, he gave me her number, then yeah. I reached out, got her number, texted her, and she said, the first thing she said was, oh, my phone's not on. You know what I'm saying, I need um, money for the bill. So I said, okay, did that. I don't even got it like that, but I did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, I said cash after the money, and then the next day, lo and behold, the next day, like, I'm expecting, you know, I mean, I was expecting her to call, but I didn't expect that because, I mean, maybe not in all reality because I know it's been a long time and I don't really know her like that, but, you know, I gave her that, but I'm like, all right, so she's text, she ain't call, so I felt some type of way, but she, um... Because I wasn't ready to call you. Cool, that's cool. It was that's very cool. hard for time. me to be able to, like, process while I'm dealing with my own stuff that's going on with me. Understandable. Mm -hmm. But the next day, she texts me like, oh, can I get 50, I need $50, can I get $50? I'm like, hmm? Huh? So I'm like, wow, like, I don't even know what I'm saying, know you like mm. that, like, and I just gave you, you know what I'm saying, $75, so it's like. Cause this is now two, she's asking you for two loans in a matter of two weeks? I mean. And y'all don't even know each other? Not even, it was a week, it was a two days. Two days, wow. Now for well, you. Well, it's not my fault. 
It's honestly, I didn't ask to be here. I feel like I'm cleaning up the pieces because I feel like I'm cleaning up the pieces of my mother. She, she don't even want to do this. She didn't even try. You know, it made me feel like I wasn't worth it. You know, like all my life I have been searching for my biological father wanting to know the truth because everybody's telling me lies. Danielle, do you think OJ is your daughter? Well, I really don't know. Do you hope that she could be? I know you have seven kids already. Do you want an eighth? I mean, if it's, you know, I mean, if it's gonna help, you know what I mean? If, whatever helps her, like, basically. That's why I'm here, like, so whatever. You, mean you really mean that? Listen, I don't, like I said, I don't tell lies. I mean, God loves me. I gotta tell you this. I actually do believe it because I've been in this situation where someone popped up and said, this is your kid. And my first reaction was to help and do whatever I needed to do. And like Karamo, I could have so, yeah, I could have been my first reaction. That's my reaction. Literally, you I said I'm gonna help, and he gave you money immediately. I pulled up. So yeah. I think I know you have some trust issues. People who have been abandoned, who have been betrayed. Sometimes you forget to recognize that there are people who are showing you some signs that they want to build a relationship. So I'm just pointing that out to you. Right, and Karamo, like, I've been abandoned as well by my father. I never knew my father. You understand? Yeah. So, so if you've been abandoned by so your that's father, why I take care of when all we were talking kids, on the phone, why did you hang why. up on me? Oh, all right. Why you wasn't being passionate right. and compassionate and patient? Okay. Since you understand. Well, let's what, get what was it? Let's, let's get to that. Let's why, get to why, that. Why did you hang up the phone? I hung up the phone because when she called me, I felt disrespected. Like, how you gonna ask me for this and ask me for that? And, but you said, and oh, then, I understand and then that you need some time. All right, cool. But, but then, then you're gonna sit there and say, oh, I'm taking too long. Yeah, no, wait. It's your mannerisms in the Texas. I was in the Uber. So I'm like, what's going on? It was nothing. Like, she was just wondering about the people in the background. I'm like, what's going because on? Because it was I'm loud. Listening. I'm asking right, I'm you listening. who is that in the She's background. She's ear hustling. Because I, about nobody's the people ear hustling. In the I'm background. asking you because instead I couldn't speaking. hear you. Instead of just speaking. Because I couldn't hear you. Why you not speaking? Instead of you I'm being an adult him. about it and saying, Love. hey, I'm in the Uber. Love. I'm going to call you back when I can talk to you. You hung up on me. Yeah, I hung up For on no you reason. You don't even know the damage that you did when you did that. You really don't. You don't even know. And you don't care. Because you ain't text me and say, oh, you know, my bad for hanging up on you. Whatever. Yo, I text you, you just after hung up. I called you. I, I showed nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like went out my way. I went out my way. I understand how my way. That, that moment could have hurt you. I do understand that. I want to acknowledge that. I want to take it to the Not comments and see what my audience has to say about this. Y'all got some comments on this? Hey, what are your thoughts on this? What made you comfortable to ask him for money, even though you didn't even know him? Um, so honestly, I was talking to one of my family members and she was telling me like, okay, if you're struggling, then ask him and see what he says. So I asked because I'm not, I'm, I'm very prideful when it comes to asking for help because I was raised to be independent. I understand as a prideful woman, you were also raised to be independent. I can see all of that. But I also understand that you were in need and you knew there's the possibility this could be your father and you want to see if he could show up for you. Am I right? Right. I knew it. All right, so what's your thoughts on this? All right, um, my question is for him. Um, you said you've been there for all your kids, which I applaud you for that. Will you be there for her if you are the father? Of course. That's why I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. For her, would you accept him? Like, would you give him a chance? Because you treat him a little hostility, but would you give him the chance to step up to be in your life? Yes, I would give him a chance, yes. Okay, that's good, all right. So, are you ready to find out if this is your daughter? Yes, I'm here, yes I am, definitely. <laughs> the truth is right here. So, this is, this is a moment for you two, especially for you, because you have been alone a lot of your life majority of your life. You've been searching for someone who could be there for you, who could love you, especially that father figure. Well, the moment is here. The DNA outcome. OJ, I think it's important for you to open this. And will you open Thank this you. and read this out loud? Yes. I've been waiting a long time for this, and as hard as this may be, I'm, I'm just ready to face the truth, no matter what it says. OJ, Danielle is your father. Mm -hmm.
bad for you, like, it's my fault, like, I feel so bad for you, like, I, I really do, I really do, like, I really, really do. I really do. Really so, I'm really sorry. I'm really feel sorry for you, but I just I do the best I can. That's all I can do. Like That's I don't know. I like I I'm just the man that I am, and I just need a father, I'm a real father. Like I'm your father, so I mean I just hope that I can make you know what I'm saying. You feel a little better, you know, in your life. I can see the sigh of relief for you, but I also see the anxiety that's being triggered in you, and I understand why. And it doesn't mean that he's not want to be there for you. Anytime someone experiences abandonment, a pain, um, a tragedy like being shot, any of these things, it triggers like, how am I gonna be treated next? Which is something you all have to pay attention to because you've already started on a rocky road where you tested him to see if he's gonna be there because let's be real, at the end of the day, I get it, two weeks, you're like, let me reach out. You didn't know if this man was your father. And at the end of the day, two weeks reaching out for, for money twice is a lot. And I'm gonna have to acknowledge that. It is a lot. Then he started reacting like, what is going on? What does she want from me? How is she gonna treat me? You're getting loud because you have expectations from him that we didn't even know if he was your father. Mm -hmm. So you two have to watch your communication. You have to start remembering one key thing, and this is an important thing. This is not your fault. Danielle, and this is not your fault, OJ. And so when you're communicating with each other, don't put your pain on each other. He had no knowledge of you. He did not know you existed. So as you see the pain coming up, you gotta be able to say, hold on, this is not towards you. I'm sorry. And you have to manage your expectations because he just learned about you, so he's gonna have to be on a process. At the same rate, you gotta also understand that even though you had nothing to do with it, just being fathers, you already know this with the other children, you gotta step in. Mm -hmm. Because the trauma she had, you're a big part of that healing. So I wanna tell y'all something. When you start seeing something, when you start to feel like he's about to, she's about to be disrespectful, just say, hey, I'm not the cause of your pain, but I will be here for you to help you heal. That's what your job is to say. And when he starts to say, like, I feel like you treat me a certain way, it's for you to stop and say, you know what? I'm sorry, you're not the person I should be addressing this at, but can we start to figure out how to move forward? And if you feel like it's overwhelming, it's okay to disconnect for a day in a respectful way. Don't hang up the phone, but just say, let me get off the phone and then come back, all right? Yes. I feel like when you already grown, like you can't change, you know what I'm saying, somebody that's already grown. But, like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? But she's like, not looking for you to change like, her. What, what I'm telling you to do is you just have to acknowledge the pain. If you don't release these feelings and attitude before you walk up the stage, this is going to snowball into something worse and worse. So I'm asking you right now, release that. Release the fact that she's grown. Release the fact that she came at you wrong. I acknowledge it. Can you acknowledge that sometimes you came at him wrong? Yes, and I apologize. You accept it? Yes. You needed I that. Do. You needed that. It's okay to say you needed that. Yes. But you got to release that here. Let that go here so y'all can take the first step to being a happy father and daughter. <laughs> but y'all going to be all right. Just take your first steps together in healthy communication. Give your daughter a hug again. This going to be all right, all right? Y'all going to be good. Y'all going to be good. Y'all going to be good. Y'all going to be all right. Oh, I just heard I love you. <laughs> Hold on, where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going. Right here to subscribe and right here to watch more, period.